Tell me about this fund because you've put some meat on the bone, as it were, about how this is going to look, how it's going to be deployed. Help me understand how that works and sort of the scope and scale of what you're after. Yeah, well, uh, a, a couple of those S words are pretty important. So let's start with scope. Uh, it's a global focus. Uh, it is uh, scale. This is going to be substantially larger than any impact fund to date. Uh, it is going to have a singular focus. As you know, there's a lot of good in the impact space, a lot of innovation that's been there, but in most cases, impact funds have multi-purposes. Uh, they're doing a variety of good things uh, and achieving various objectives. We've got one objective, uh, which is to put assets and companies on a path to net zero, um, to be part of the climate transition, in fact, to accelerate the climate transition. Um, and so with the global scope, with the operating expertise and the reach of uh, Brookfield, uh, we're going to go out and do that um, and, uh, and look to deliver those returns. So it's a double bottom line. And I guess the key thing and why we wanted to have it as an impact fund is so that we have the same discipline in achieving that environmental objective, reducing the amount of carbon uh, and greenhouse gases that uh, these companies and assets uh, are emitting, making them part of the solution to climate change, not part of the problem. Uh, have that same focus and commitment and um, clarity, transparency, as we do to uh, the financial returns that uh, we deliver. Well, and, and I want to talk about sort of some of these intersections because you've lived at a number of them uh, over the course of your career and currently do as well. But but I want to spend another minute, if we can, on Brookfield because there is this question, you know, when someone like you, and we talked about this back last year, when someone like you, quote unquote, leaves a post like you left uh, at the Bank of England, you know, there's all sorts of speculation. Where is he going to go? What's he going to do? And and you sort of vote with your feet in, in many ways. Help me understand the Brookfield story here and why that was appealing. Yeah, well, you know, I, as I said a moment ago, Jason, I wanted to put words into action. I believe that this is uh, a it's climate change is the biggest risk to the world. But when you turn it around, if you're part of the solution, it makes it the biggest commercial opportunity uh, in the world. In effect, we're going to rewire, so to speak, the entire global economy uh, consistent with net zero. And I wanted to be at a place that could play a leading role, in fact, in many respects, a defining role in that. Now, uh, it happens to be the case that uh, I have known Bruce Flatt, uh, CEO of Brookfield, and uh, many of the senior partners of Brookfield for longer than I'd care to admit, but I will admit to uh, more than a quarter century, uh, I've seen what they have done with the firm, transforming it from you know, a, uh, into one of the world's leading alternative asset managers, um, shifting from black to, uh, you know, through the spectrum, uh, the underlying assets uh, towards green, not all the way to green, but towards green. Um, and in the process, uh, developing this enormous expertise uh, not just in renewables, but really in decarbonization, understanding energy systems, understanding business transformation. I mean, this is a this Brookfield is a is an entity that uh, operates, doesn't own, it does own, but it also operates 20 gigawatts of renewable power across hydro, wind, solar, across four uh, continents, um, and, and and then has the equivalent, in fact, more than the equivalent of in their development pipelines. So track record, expertise, the people, and that that ability um, to operate at scale, at global scope, and to focus on transformation. That, that all lined up for me. Um, and uh, I guess the last thing is just an enthusiasm within the organization to accelerate uh, what needs to be done. 